Hey there, Pathless Peddlers. If you like adventure bikes, you're gonna love this shop visit with our friend Bob from Bantam Bicycle Works. So stay tuned for After the Bumper. Hey there, everybody. This is our friend Bob from uh, Bantam Bicycle Work. Uh, we've, ac we've actually known each other for quite a bit uh, back when you work over at uh, Blinky, right? Yeah, Blinky Cycle Works in uh, Philadelphia, PA. For people that aren't aware of Bantam Bicycle Works, tell us about the, the business. Um, I'm a custom frame builder. Uh, I make kind of one-off bikes for people, mostly commuting, touring, bikepacking bikes these days. TIG welded, lug bikes, Philip Rays, the whole nine yards. And you've been at it for a while. You're not like a fly-by-night frame builder. You've been in the industry building bikes for a long time. Yeah, I've been doing this for almost 13 years now. I worked at Belenki for six and a half years, had about a year at UBI teaching bike frame building, and been here at this shop for about the last five. About roughly how many bikes over the course of your career do you think you've you've built or, or touched in, in the process? Yeah, I've probably worked on about 550. 50 bikes at this point. It's a lot of man hours. Yeah, it's a lot of brazons. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, can we get a quick tour of your shop? Sure. All okay. right. This is where I cut things that are made out of metal. I've got a bunch of big machinery. It's got a lathe and three milling machines. Where does one find huge machines like this? Like this isn't something that you can pick up at like, um, I don't know, Sears or something, right? <laughs> These all actually came off Craigslist. Oh, right? Yeah. Is there, like, if, if you didn't have a lathe, is there a manual process that you could get by with? Yeah, actually, first bike frame that I built, I did it in my living room. <laughs> Egg beater, hand drill, wow. and a hacksaw and some files, and <laughs> that's it. But it came out really straight. And You still have that bike around somewhere? Yeah, it's over there. Do you want to come see it? Yeah. <laughs> first bike I ever built, made in Philadelphia. Hand striped by Simon Firth, my coworker at Belinky. Took me an entire month. Oh wow! <laughs> Eight hours a day. I could probably do the same thing in two days now if I. Is that because of the tools or because of just the years of experience? Uh, both. So over here is my uh, workspace. Do like all my handwork over here. So like my filing and sanding and grinding. You know, making forks. It's like I'm in the process of making a, like a, you know, fork for like an adventure bike. This is where I do all the stuff where I make the metal hot. <laughs> um, welding and brazing. Like the real sexy image is always playing with the fire, but that's like actually a very small percentage of the yeah. overall job. Yeah, about half of it is emails. <laughs> <laughs> about another 40 plus percent of it's like sanding. Yeah. <laughs> it's mostly sanding and emails. Yeah, sanding and emails. <laughs> is there a particular tool that you, you just love using? Actually, yeah, sad to say it's sandpaper. <laughs> sandpaper? <laughs> it's kind of what makes everything look really good when you're done. So do you hand sand or do you... Um, I do both. I have like a... So it looks like from uh, your Instagram, uh, you're, you've been making a ton of adventure bikes uh, yes. recently. So yes, I've been doing a lot of adventure bikes. Um, I did a you should do like a batch of them in the winter. So I guess what, what what makes it an adventure bike? I think what to me makes an adventure bike is that uh, one, it fits like a fairly wide, you know, cushy tire. This is something I don't think a lot of other like companies doing bikepacking kind of stuff do is that like the geometry is really specifically designed for carrying weight on the bike um, as opposed to just taking a mountain bike and <laughs> strapping some bags on it and dealing with the way it handles but you could have a bike that actually handles well when it's loaded up. So what is the the tire size that this, these bikes are built around? These will take uh, 650B by 3 inch or 27.5 by 3. What, what are the design challenges when you're, when you're building a bike around wider tires? Uh, yeah a lot of it has to do with the drivetrain. Yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, it's like making sure the chain will be able to clear the tire, making sure the tire will fit and the chain stays, and your chain ring is not going to interfere with your, ch your chain stays because you have such a wide tire and you have to push the chain stays out. All right, so this is another adventurous bike. I've been calling this the all road bike. Somewhere between a road bike and a rando bike, but with very wide tires. This one will take a 650B by 48. Wow. Okay. So pretty chubby. It's almost two inches. This is also specifically designed for like carrying weight on the front. Basket up on the front to keep his stuff, and then some low rider pannier mounts for you know mm -hmm. carrying bags on as well. <laughs> and also, this guy requested that he have a walled basket on top, <laughs> <laughs> um, but also have it removable. So I kind of came up with a pretty simple way of just four bolts that hold on the basket. You know, in terms of basket packing, it's either zip ties or, or zip ties, but this yeah. is kind of a cool solution. Whether that really strikes 
liking things about this bike, I think, is the paint. That is Matt Olive Drab. Nice. Um, he sent me a photograph of an old U.S. Army Jeep from World <laughs> War II. He's like, I want to look like that. Cool. Well, it looks, looks awesome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So you've been building bikes for a long time. Yeah. Uh, business sounds like it's it's doing well. So what are the next steps? Do you think you'll grow, hire employees, or just keep it kind of just you as a builder? Uh, I'm gonna plan on keeping it just me at the moment. Um, got you know like a family and a house and other things that I need to spend money on. So it's good to have in my other job for the stability of income. So as a consumer, someone that's uh, kind of contemplating like a custom bike, uh, who should get a custom bike? You should get a custom bike. Everybody. <laughs> People who have a really hard time being fitted on standard size bikes, you know, hence like how I build a lot of bikes for really tall people and really short people. Mm -hmm. um, or people whose body proportions are a little different than normal. If you want a particular kind of bike that doesn't necessarily exist out there is another thing. Yeah. Or if you want something, you know, particularly beautiful or nice, like kind of a piece of art, yeah. that's also another reason. Uh, well, thank you so much, Bob, for the, the shop visit. Um, do you let people stop by? Yeah, I'm totally open. Just give me a call, set up an appointment. So if you guys uh, are looking for your next adventure bike, uh, if you're looking to step up your basket packing game, <laughs> then definitely check out uh, Bob over at Bantam Bicycle Works. Uh, contact him via Instagram if you want your own personal shop visit. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>